darlings, let's talk about your genital self-image, shall we? <laughs> because it is a huge issue and something that is really starting to concern me with all of the surgeries and people out there offering vaginal rejuvenation surgeries and labioplasties and all of these surgeries and interventions to women to change the shape, size, appearance of their genitals, to make them somehow tighter or more desirable or more like the airbrushed pictures they see online or on porn sites or whatever else. And so it's something that obviously you, you know, makes sense is so important to your sexual experience, the way you feel about the size, shape, appearance, odor of your genitals, but it's something that nobody ever talks about. Now, I got to tell you, I did a study on this in my academic geekdom. It was published in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy, and this was actually a study I did way back in 2003 before they were even doing a lot of the surgeries and the offerings that they're doing today. But what I found is that I, I created this genital self image scale asking women what they thought about the appearance, the size, the shape, even the odor of their genitals. And I found that poor genital self image, meaning they felt bad about all those things, didn't necessarily affect their sexual response, their sexual experience, their arousal, but it did affect their desire to be sexual, which makes total sense, right? Because if you're self-conscious, you often will avoid sexual scenarios or avoid having your genitals seen or experienced. I also have found that when people have poor genital self-image, now this has changed since, you know, it's sort of like nobody was concerned about their behinds until, you know, about their butts until Kim Kardashian and everyone started having, you know, those butt implants and then everybody or everyone wanted a butt like Kim Kardashian and started to do the butt implants. And now everybody is self-conscious about their butt. It's the same thing with genital self-image. Now, here's my problem. Like you might want to say, OK, Laura, look, you know, I'm allowed to do whatever surgery I want. If I'm self-conscious about the way my genitals look and that affects how I feel naked, why shouldn't I be allowed to change it? you are allowed to change it, right? And I'm not gonna stand in your way or tell you you're wrong for changing it. But I do think we have to have a conversation about the effects of changing it, because there are effects and they're not always pretty. And also to maybe call us to consciousness to at least question why you're changing it. Because I cannot tell you the number of women I have seen who have come to me after having one of these procedures and their response is no longer the same, their sensation isn't happening anymore. And the reason that they were doing it in the first place is because some partner had told them that they were too large or that their genitals were somehow unattractive, which infuriates me. If a man ever tells a woman that her vagina is too loose, Instead of going to get surgery to change the size of your vagina, you tell him to go get surgery to change the size of his penis to make it a little bit larger, okay? Because here's what you have to understand about a vagina. Let's just have a little moment of anatomy, okay? What you see on the outside is called the vulva. It's not the vagina. The vagina is the internal canal that you know, penis can, or something else can go in, baby can come out, your period comes out of your vagina, right? That is the vagina, that internal canal. What you see on the outside is the vulva. Now, let's just talk for a moment about the vagina and the things people are doing about the, to their vaginas. They are tightening them. Okay, now you have to understand that a vagina is a potential space. It can get wide enough, stretch wide enough to let a baby pass through there. And it can squeeze tight enough to hold on to a pencil if you wanted to. I mean, I don't suggest you do this, but it can squeeze, right? It all has to do with your Kegel muscles and your transverse abdominal muscles, those muscles that surround the entire torso. So strengthening those muscles is really the key to a tight vagina. You can squeeze it as tight as you want. And if you strengthen those Kegels, which are the muscles that you say muscles you use to stop the flow of urine, and I'll make a separate, I think I have a separate video, but I'll check and make sure. And if not, I'll make one about how to strengthen your Kegels. But 
if you strengthen those and they are strong and you have a healthy vagina, you should be able to, you know, squeeze around a pencil size penis <laughs> as well as, you know, relax around the largest size penis or anything else that's in there. So when some guy has told you that your vagina isn't tight enough, you need to tell him that his penis isn't large enough and or you need to strengthen those Kegel muscles, but do not do the surgery that they offer for a couple of reasons. First of all, there are crucial nerves and blood vessels in your vagina that are central to your sexual function. And when they go in and cut in there, they are cutting around and in those nerves and blood vessels without any care. They don't even, they haven't even adequately mapped them in women. They don't pay attention to that when they're doing genital surgeries. So not only are you likely to lose sensation doing these surgeries, in addition, there is an integrity to the size, to the shape and size of the vagina naturally. It's, it's like a banana shape, actually. It's a little bit curved. And so very often when people do these surgeries, it tightens and shortens the vagina and it changes the integrity of the shape of the vagina. And so then the woman ends up with no sensation, little to no sensation because the nerves and blood vessels that have been affected by the surgery, she has difficulty with lubrication and she very often has pain. I cannot tell you hundreds of women I've talked to who have experienced this after vaginal rejuvenation surgery, as they call it. The other thing that is ridiculous and preying on your insecurities is this whole idea of the O spot or the G spot shot or whatever they call it, where they say they're going to put an injection of collagen into your G spot, which is a point in the vagina, about a third of the way into the vagina on the belly button side of, you know, if she's lying on her back on the anterior side of the vagina, that is essential to sexual function. It's a, it's a bundle of nerves. It's thought to be associated with the skein's glands. It's kind of the analogous to the prostate in men. And so some doctors out there who are looking to prey on women's needs and insecurities have said, oh, we'll give you a collagen shot in your G-spot. It's going to make your G-spot bigger, and then it's going to be easier to hit. You do not need to put a collagen shot in your vagina to get aroused. Just strengthen those Kegels, strengthen those muscles, use them during intercourse so that you're creating that friction with your muscles and you do not need to inject any foreign substance into your vagina or into your G spot. It's just doing it on the surface. First of all, it's not getting, it's not pushing up the nerves underneath and it's just a marketing tool, just preying on women's insecurities. Now, final thing I want to talk about. Okay. We've talked about vaginal rejuvenation. No, don't want you to do that. We've talked about G-spot shots. Don't want you to do that. Final thing I want to talk about is this whole idea of labioplasty or changing your labia, right? Now, this comes from looking at way too many airbrushed, filtered pictures and images of women's genitals and the onslaught of media that women are being exposed to telling them that they need to have perfectly symmetrical labia and that somehow having this labiaplasty will make their vulvas look younger or prettier or more perfect. Every vulva is different. Every vulva is beautiful. Our labia, meaning those lips, you know, that are around the entrance to the vagina, are different sizes, each one, just like women have different size breasts, we have different size labias on each side. Some of us have more uneven labia, just like some of us have uneven breasts to greater degrees or lesser degrees. In addition, remember what I said about the vaginal surgery, even more so, do you know that your labia are richer in nerve endings than almost anywhere else in your body. And when they go in and they cut the labia with their special laser or whatever stupid technique they've created that is going to make your labia like when you were 14 or whatever it is that they're claiming they're going to do, they are cutting into crucial nerves and blood vessels that are central to your sexual function and enjoyment. And for what? 
to match some airbrush picture in a magazine or online, it's ridiculous. And it's preying on our insecurities and it's negatively affecting our sexual function. And it infuriates me. I have colleagues that are doing this. I have relatives that are in the field that are offering this and I, it infuriates me. It infuriates me because it is preying on women's insecurities. It is attacking our most central point of our sexual well-being, our genitals, and it is promoting this idea that our genitals are supposed to look a certain way. And it is preying on women's inherent poor genital self-image because society tells us that those are dirty or ugly or whatever. You know, if you if you ask, I remember when I was doing sex education with kids, and I was getting them comfortable with vocabulary and also understanding gender differences. One of the exercises I would do with them, which they loved, but was also very telling, was I would ask them to come up with all the slang words that they could think of to describe male genitals and all the ones they could think of to describe female genitals. And so when they would get into the male genitals, they're like seven inches of heaven, love snake, you know, all of these empowering words about penises. Oh, you should hear the words they came up with to describe women's genitals, you know, stink box. Let me look at their, oh, they're just disgusting. I don't even want to repeat them, but they are not pretty. Axe wound, right? That's another one that you'll sometimes hear. These are uh, really derogatory, really negative terms, slang terms that kids hear, not to mention adults and not to mention girls and women, all these derogatory terms to describe a woman's genitals in negative ways and unattractive ways and in ways that imply they're smelly and ugly and bad. And so, of course, we are going to easily fall prey to these surgeons and doctors who are offering shots and plumpers and way lasers to cut away at your genitals and make them somehow appear perfect. And they may in fact appear perfect on the surface, but your sexual enjoyment, your sexual sensation is going to drastically change, not for the better. And more often than not, you're going to have pain as a result. Now, there's one caveat to this. And I have met and worked with many women like this where for whatever genetic reason, and sometimes even after having several babies, their labia are stretched out and hanging so low that it impedes their ability to have to play sports or to wear jeans or to ride a bicycle because it's uncomfortable and painful or they're getting chronic infections because, you know, the vagina is almost getting sealed off by labia that are too long and clumped up together. And so in those cases, obviously, if you're having pain or chronic infections, then yeah, okay, go and see a specialist, someone who does a ton of this, who really can pay attention to the nerves and blood vessels as best as they can. And, you know, obviously the pain that you're currently in will probably, is probably greater than the loss of sensation you may experience with a labiaplasty. But that is the rare exception. The majority of women who are doing these procedures do not need them and quite frankly, end up regretting them. So please do not fall prey to these doctors and so-called experts that are telling you that somehow you are required to change the size and shape and appearance of your genitals in order to enjoy sex and in order to be sexually desirable because neither one of those are true. In fact, the opposite is true, okay? Now, if you want me to make a video about male genital self-image, I got some things to say about that too, or anything else on your mind. I'm always here for you, helping you learn to love and be loved better.